The hype around Wrath is real, and in just a few weeks, everyone will be going back to experience the golden age of PvP in World of Warcraft. Arena has never been as fun as it was in Wrath, and now it's finally coming back for everyone, which of course comes with a lot of expectation that it's going to be just as fun as it used to be. So is Wrath Classic going to live up to the hype, or will it feel like TBC Arena all over again and be a bitter disappointment? In this guide, we'll be answering your burning questions like, will I need to PvE? What will the best comps be? And so much more. And for any of you old timers that are already on the Wrath hype train, you may also remember that Skill Cap launched way back during its original release, so you know we're already hyped up. So much so that we're launching a brand new website just for Wrath Classic. For the past few months, we've put an insane amount of work into creating the best class guides around with the most knowledgeable players in the game, and these guides will be launched just in time for you with our brand new site to get the head start on everyone else. But you don't have to wait for Wrath to subscribe, since with the special discount link below, you'll get access to both Shadowlands and Wrath of the Lich King, and eventually Dragonflight under one subscription. Three games, one sub. That is a steal for $4.99 a month, especially with our rating game guarantee. Anyway, jumping back into the guide, firstly, let's take a look at what the biggest changes are going into Wrath. If you've been playing or following retail, you'll know this problem oh too well, and that's how almost all classes and specs function purely around cooldowns. You have your standard sustained damage, which is about on par with how much healing output can be done by any given healer, but then you pop an offensive cooldown and your damage suddenly spikes through the roof, and the only way to counter this is with a strong external or defensive cooldown. And after this trade is made, both parties fall back into the same sustained damage output, which is easily outhealed until your next set of offensive of cooldowns. This leads to what is often called scripted gameplay, and creates the cooldown driven meta that has been part of the retail experience for multiple expansions. But when compared to Wrath PvP, sustained damage is very high, and pretty much every ability you have on your bars does substantial damage. Cooldowns still exist, of course, but they're by no means required in order to score or set up kills to the extent of retail, and in fact, most of the spikes in damage come instead from things like trinkets, of all things. The same goes for defensive cooldowns. Let's take a look at the example of a Shadow Priest on retail. They have Greater Fade, Void Shift, Desperate Prayer, Dispersion, and even maybe Fleshcraft. Compare this to Wrath, and all that's available is Dispersion. And the big thing is that it's rarely the case that you have to use these cooldowns in response to opponents offensives. The reason being that defense, rather than being subject to a single button press, is more so tied into the specifics of the class or spec at hand. So Shadow Priest has Prayer of Mending, Power Word Shield, Renew, and even Off Heals, which they can use to supplement their defensive kit. And as a result, means games in most cases can and will be a lot faster, and quite frankly just more fun in general. So instead of being entirely focused around cooldowns and trading efficiently, it's just high sustained damage, crowd control, or even coordinated burn Burst, which is going to close out games, rather than having to spend 10 minutes of a game to then create a 30 second window where your opponent has no defensives and you have your major cooldown coming up. It isn't all sunshine and rainbows though, and there are of course still some downsides, most notably is crit RNG. With sustained damage being so high, critical strikes on abilities can have a very large impact. For example, if a Destro Warlock lands multiple crits back to back, it's pretty much lights out. But with critical strike chance being low, and resilience helping to combat this, it's by no means an every game occurrence. From a TBC standpoint, Wrath improves drastically on every aspect of PvP. Classes now tend to feel way more complete. For instance, Elemental Shamans get Lava Burst, Restoration Shamans get Riptide, Disc gets Penance, and Warriors can use Charge in combat. Resists also become a lot less of a problem and far less frustrating, with talents like Iron Will from Warriors and Unbreakable Will from Priests, and even the Orc Racial Hardiness now offering baseline reductions to crowd control, rather than a chance to resist. Also, even more of an improvement though is that Counterspell, Silence, Spell Lock, and all other interrupts can no longer resist, and are also off the global cooldown, which is something that definitely feels a lot more natural. It's fair to say though that this whole topic is something we could go on and on about, and if you'd like to see a full video on all the changes, let us know in the comments. But for now, let's move on and discuss something just as important, the meta. In regards to this, both TBC and Retail suffer from very similar problems, and that some comps and specs are just way overtuned. This leads to a very stale meta, where you're constantly seeing the same comps and classes over and over again. Picture the last time you queued up 2v2 or 3v3. How many different comps did you face? 
Regardless of your rating bracket, you're still going to be seeing the same small selection of classes and compositions. It has to be said, we're by no means sitting here saying Wrath is the pinnacle of class balance, because, well, it's definitely not, and players have and always will gravitate to those specs that have a slight edge, which in the case of Wrath is specs like Holy Paladin, Warriors, and Elemental Shamans. The glaring difference here, however, and the point we're trying to make, is that every spec, no matter how obscure, will have compositions they can play and do very well in. And it's this fact which makes the meta a lot more diverse and enjoyable. You're by no means going to see the same comp and specs over and over again no matter what rating bracket you are. Even comp archetypes drastically change between each game. One game will be a control comp like RMP, one game will be melee caster healer, another game some form of spell cleave, the next one a beast cleave trying to zerg you down. Another very good point if you're strictly coming from a retail background and something you'll also get to experience is competition and activity in all brackets, with 5v5 and 2v2 at least for the first couple of seasons offering titles and end of season rewards. Although rewards from these brackets were eventually phased out, you can't overlook how much this opened up in terms of gameplay variation. Specs that may not have the most solidified spot at the highest level in 3v3 can still have a composition built around or slot in easily to things like a caster cleaves or even rush down comps in 5v5 or be specifically strong in 2v2 when playing compositions like double DPS. What this means is that you're never going to be left with that very common feeling we've all experienced where your class or spec prevents you from participating at the level you want to. Altogether, this means the meta as a whole is just a lot more diverse and flexible. Moving on, let's talk about class balance. We touched on this slightly when discussing the meta, but as with any game in history, players are always more inclined to gravitate to those specs which are deemed the strongest, and that's never going to change. And Wrath does of course have this, and all it takes is to quickly glance at any tier list from any YouTuber to see the same few classes at the top. Instead though, what you should be paying the most attention to is just how packed these middle tiers are, and then compare this to TBC or Retail where classes either tend to be way too strong or just unplayable with very little in between. TBC was obviously the first iteration of Arena and coordinated PvP that we saw in World of Warcraft's history, so of course there were massive flaws and many classes and specs were never balanced or designed with PvP in mind. Wrath does a very good job of taking those specs you rarely see for obvious reasons and giving them the tools they need to be both viable, playable, or at the very least, fit a certain role in a certain composition. A good examples are Paladins who in TBC have practically zero instant healing which makes them very niche, but going into Wrath that gets addressed and they can fit into almost any composition. Something which definitely aids with class balance just feeling a lot better overall is due to the basic gameplay. Going back to retail for a comparison, if you played Arena, you may have experienced a matchup where you've sat there and just thought to yourself, no matter what you do, you can't have an impact. Whether that be doing an endless CC chain onto a healer, but somehow lacking the damage to finish a target through their plethora of defensive cooldowns or self-healing, or sitting there doing a perfect damage rotation, free casting, and the feeling of just having that pressure effortlessly out healed. Well, in comparison, this feeling is very rare, and that's because the smaller things during your games matter so much more. Being able to do high damage will result in a kill. Doing good CC chains will result in a kill as well. But even something as simple as landing interrupts can actually swing the game in your favor, and it's this fact alone that just makes classes a lot more enjoyable to play. The final point we want to address is one which is a very hot topic for retail players, especially, and that's gearing. Are you required to PvE? Are there massive grinds to do? And how do you gear up? Let's cover the basics. In Wrath, there are two types of PvP currency, Arena Points and Honor, so there are no longer Marks of Honor. Arena Points are used for your 5-piece set, weapons, offhand, and range slots. Then Honor is used for off-pieces, so that's bracers, belt, boots, and the rest of the slots. This honor grind itself is something that's not as daunting as it may seem, and the best way to grind it is by doing Winter Grasp and Battlegrounds, and in regards to the latter, you can now queue for random battlegrounds, which makes the process more efficient. The grind itself has also been reduced, with honor gains substantially increasing and having battlegrounds now reward you honor based off your personal performance. Unlike TBC, you also receive a large amount of honor even if you're on the losing team, so there's no more queuing up, getting stomped, and then receiving pitiful honor gain. You're going to have to grind honor no matter what in Wrath, but alas, there are very clear goals you can work towards and once it's done, it's done, and you're then finished with honor for the rest of the season. As for Arena Point, these are gained weekly based off your highest personal rating, and in order to be eligible, all you need to do is queue up 10 Arena games. That's it. You can even speed this process up by doing Vault of Archivon once a week for the chance of PvP drops. So once the honor grind's done, there's no having to queue 50 games a week just to then unlock a chance at getting a piece of gear that you may not even want. 
Now, let's get into the touchy subject of PvE gear. PvE gear is undoubtedly very prominent in Wrath, and chances are you came to this video already knowing that. But to answer the question, yes, if you want to min-max and be competitive at the highest level, you will more than likely want a couple of PvE items, and as the seasons progress, PvE gear only gets stronger. The need for it, however, goes on a class-by-class -class basis. Classes like Rogue and Mage require PvE gear for more offensive stats. Whereas Elemental Shamans, Paladins, Death Knights, and even Warriors in the early season can get away with PvP gearing only. But really, as with all things, everything depends on your goals. If you wanted to just casually PvP without ever stepping into a raid, you'll do just fine. PvE content as a whole, at least for the earlier tiers, is far less challenging than you would expect on retail and is barely a step up from TBC. If joining a guild and raiding week in, week out isn't up your alley, no worries, because the majority of content can be cleared by pugs. So, to go back to the title of the video, should you play Wrath of the Lich King? Well, this is, like most things, something you have to decide for yourself. But just in terms of balance, class design, and gameplay from a PvP standpoint, it's arguably one of the best iterations of World of Warcraft that we've ever seen. And with the additions of level 70 boosts, even if you didn't experience TBC, you don't have to go through the hardship of leveling from fresh and can jump straight into Wrath and, at the very least, give it a go. At the end of the day, what do you have to lose? Which is the same question you should be asking when you see skill caps rating gain guarantee. Yes, that's right, if you are a Shadowlands grinder and waiting for Wrath to launch, we got you covered with over 600 class guides and a thousand arena commentaries. And yes, to answer your question, we will be doing a huge launch for Wrath. So whether or not you are a Shadowlands grinder or in the Lich King Classic waiting room, skill capped is the number one place for all of your needs. Visit the link below for a discount code to start your PvP journey today. Anyway, be sure to let us know in the comments below if you're planning on playing Wrath of the Lich King Classic and what you're most looking forward to. And here at Skillcapped, we of course will be covering Wrath fully with our in-depth guides, commentaries, and tier lists. So if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more Wrath of the Lich King content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.